Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, it's raining again. Uh, I can't go flying, but I have been sent by Hobbyco the Real Flight Drone Flight Simulator. And we're gonna have a bit of a look at this today to see if that can, um, that can help get over my twitchiness at not being able to, to get anywhere. But before we go into that, this is The Kitchen Table. As always on The Kitchen Table, we need a beverage when discussing drones and drone-related matters. Um, and today uh, I'm drinking my coffee. It's uh, home-roasted Monsoon Malabar, drunk as a tall Americano, so cheers. Mm. Very, 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 very good. Um, yes, um, drone simulators. Um, not something I've really looked into before. Um, this is by the people behind Real Flight, which uh, it's, they've got quite a good reputation in traditional fixed wing uh, model aircraft simulation. And this is something they're bringing out or that it, it, it is out now, I believe in the States is starting to come through into Europe soon, um, which is a simulator for your drone. So we're gonna have a quick look at what comes in the enormous box, which I kind of assumed would be just a piece of software. Uh, but it's a little bit more than that. Um, and then we're going to actually have a look at how it performs in terms of being useful. And I think there are going to be some people who might find this useful for a few reasons. And I think there are some people who um, probably won't get anything from that. And we'll try and sort of go through the pros and cons and who it might be useful for. Um, so yeah, let's go and do uh, have a bit of a, and usually for this channel, let's do a little bit of an unboxing. Okay, so we have um, we have all sorts of nice blurbs and pretty pictures uh, in here. And the reason why it's in such a big box, which I didn't appreciate at first, was because it actually comes with one of these. Now that is really interesting to me because a lot of the other simulators you can get online, you uh, you actually kind of don't get anything like this. You have to either use an uh, if you've got a PC, you have to sort of use an Xbox type controller or a keyboard, and that's just not it's not even worth um, you know worth buying. Um, we've got various drone models. You, it comes with a real transmitter, which we'll have a look at. And then the other thing about it is it's saying, look, you know, as well as just, you know, basics and flying, you can use it to, the idea is that you can use it to practice things like framing shots. So you can practice tilting a gimbal and, you know, orientating the camera whilst flying and, and things like that. And it gives you some exercises and things to do. So, we'll have a look. <laughs> So obviously um, software, uh, PC, um, basically it's, um, it seems to be fairly low. I'll put the actual specs in the description down below of the PC that you need. But I've been running this on my laptop, which as those of you who've been watching the channel for a while will know is rather underpowered. Uh, and it actually, whilst it probably doesn't look graphically as super smooth as it would do on a more modern computer with better graphics. Um, the actual flight physics engine runs at full speed, whether you're running it on a chugger like mine or, or the latest thing, so that's fine. The other thing it comes with is this, which actually, if I can get it out, is quite impressive. Um, this is the Interlink Elite Controller by Futaba, of all people. Uh, it looks like it's a, a, it's a shell from a, an older, this is a dummy battery battery pack. Um, but you've got basically a proper size, moderately well-weighted um, RC transmitter with various switches available. You've also got a tilt, which is sort of analogous to the Phantom style tilt wheel and some people have put actually have put tilt knobs on their older phantoms um, we get the two sticks and we get some buttons that you can actually interact with the software on the screen which is a great thing so you don't have to keep going keyboard transmitter keyboard transmitter um, one thing that um, is not ideal i would suggest for most ready to fly drone pilots is that the throttle is not center sprung again i suspect this has been uh, the, the, this is probably the same unit that's used with their fixed wing software. Where of course, if you've got a fixed wing aircraft, you want you want the throttle to to, to stay where you put it because that's the you know the, the throttle does a different purpose when you're flying fixed wing. Um, now, having said that, um, and, and out of the box, actually, it was a very smooth kind of thing, and I didn't I didn't like that. But they have to be fair to them; they've thought of that because in the box came another little metal kind of leaf 
there. And what you do is you pop the back off, there's only four screws, um, and you can replace the sort of smooth one with this, uh, the one I put in now, which has a sort of a, you probably might be able to hear it if I hold it up to the mic, a ratcheting effect. So you kind of feel little detents as you go up. So once you've got it into the center position there, you know that, you know, one, two, three. And I actually found that once I was flying, it's, they've given, I think maybe deliberately, they've built in a fair bit of slack as to where dead center is. So you don't find yourself constantly bouncing up and down with the drone. So that's uh, something that I think if you haven't flown before, you need to be aware of. If you have, you soon get used to it. Um, those of you who are long enough in the tooth will remember when all drones used to do that anyway. Um, other than that, it's basically instead of a transmitter antenna at the top, USB cable. The other thing that's really interesting, I haven't been able to test this because I haven't got a, um, I haven't got the uh, the Phantom 2 version 2 transmitter, but one of the interesting things it comes with is a selection of adapters. With a, it's got a buddy lead at the back, and it comes with a selection of adapters so that if you have a real genuine transmitter, you can plug these in and be able to get the relevant connection and attach your own transmitter. Now this one does come with something that looks suspiciously like it should work with the DJI. Phantom 2 version 2 transmitters. If you've got one with the buddy uh, lead jack with the trainer port as they call it, then uh, it's probably highly likely that you can actually pass this through, plug this into your P2 and actually just leave that as a connector and use the Phantom control to assign. That's really interesting. Like I say, I haven't been able to test that because I had a version one Phantom and now I've got a Phantom 3 which doesn't have the trainer port. It's only the Phantom 2 version two controllers, um, which I know lots of you have. So that was very interesting. And if you have other RC gear, then you can plug in. Um, so that's that. I thought that was a good unit and had a really nice feel. But the most important thing is, how does it fly? Let's go and see. Okay, so here we are. This is the opening uh, screen. Um, uh, installation was easy, put it in, accept a few things, uh, direct text if you haven't got it, in it goes. Um, uh, you've also got options to, uh, um, you, sorry, not options, you um, also uh, can calibrate the transmitter and sync everything up and uh, uh, you have to link, there is a serial number on the back of the transmitter, there's a serial number on the software. Again, it's just to make sure that the two are, I guess, bought and sold as a package. So let's, um, let's go and fly. I've turned the sound down. Um, on the recorder, you can hear it if I... Yeah, so that would get annoying. Um, <laughs> but obviously it makes buzzy noises, uh, as you'd expect. Um, uh, so yeah, we've got some... If I press the menu button... I'm using the transmitter here, I'm not using the keyboard. If I press menu, uh, it then tells me which aircraft. So I've got a little up and down key. Let's go and do the... Hubsan X4 Pro. Let's not do it with prop guards. We, 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 select. And now we've got a, uh, a little Hubsan. Um, you can see on the right hand side of the screen, we've got a, uh, it shows you what's happening with your transmitter. We can see switches, we can see gauges, which is nice. And then at the top, we've got, uh, you can see what mode it's in. So currently, I'm, we've got this switch here, puts it into headless mode or course lock off and on. And then you've got return to home, position hold or GPS, and altitude hold or ATI mode. So let's go into position mode. Um, and then take off. We've got no wind at the moment. Um, but you can see as I wiggle on the sticks, it's a very, you know, for those of you who know the old Phantom sort of style, you've flown one of these around, it's, uh, it's a pretty swift and accurate representation of what uh, what they do. Now, it will always, I've got it set so that it zooms into your aircraft, but tries and keeps an element of the horizon visible. Um, which I find is, 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 is useful. And then a quick keyboard command. Let's put some wind, it's no naught. Uh, there we go, one, two, three, four, Let's do five, seven miles an hour look. So you can already see the aircraft sort of moving and it's using, quite, I thought, quite a realistic, you can see it's starting to drift, but the uh, but the, the GPS hold is trying to keep things in place. 
which I thought was a nice realistic uh, thing. Let's just, this is for those of you who've never tried moving out of GPS mode and into only ATI, let's do that now and see what happens. Hello wind drift, and you're suddenly going off, you think, oh, I've got a fly away. So actually being able to put in some wind correction and bring it back is a pretty good learning tool in my opinion. Let's spin it round just to make things more interesting. Um, and then, you know, it will be drifting off. So that's quite an interesting. And let's put it back into hold. There we go. Um, so yeah, uh, everything else. I mean, you can just see the gimbal there. If I twist the dial, whoop, I've got gimbal control. And then the, uh, if I move over to the, to, the, to the mouse now and just go to views, let's, we're in fixed position. This is the nose view. So this is the actual view as if you were sitting on the uh, on the top of the aircraft, pretty much. Uh, the next one would be uh, the chase view, which is kind of, you know, the, the follow you wherever you go kind of thing. So it will maintain a set distance behind. You can follow your drone off on its little journey. How exciting, let's do a little bit of a banked turn there. Um, and then hold. And the other last one is the gimbal view, which is interesting because I've gone all the way down. Let's go. So you've got now uh, on the twist, you've got a gimbal view. Um, so you could, um, so if we fly over to this concrete block, Let's adjust our gimbal so we've got a good square. And then you can then you can do interesting things like practice flying your own POI. So let's slide left, but whilst giving it some right rudder. Oh, look at that. Manual POI. Yeah, I know the computer does it much better on the aircraft, but there we go. So that's a good little practice tick there because you have to put your right stick in one direction and your left one in the opposite. And uh, you've got to just practice getting the rotation rates correct. So that's actually, I thought that was, you know, it's pretty nice. Um, and then you've obviously got zooms. You can, where do you want to look at my aircraft? What sort of zoom? As I said, I've, I'm going to put keep ground in view zoom. Uh, and then you can watch your aircraft over there. Um, let's try and crash it into those containers, shall we? Boink. Uh-oh. And now we are well and truly stuck. I would have to go and ask the kind building site man if we can get our knackered drone off his container. Um, the good news is though, if all goes sorry wrong, you press this big red button called reset. Bing. And then we're back and we can take off. Um, very nice. Uh, so far, you know, I'm quite liking it. Um, the other thing that you can do is dependent on the aircraft model menu and we can go down to select the aircraft model again and we can choose uh, where's the one where we were oh the quadcopter x yes i wonder who that's modeled on oh Hello, attitude mode, right, loiter, which is what they're calling GPS mode. And you could see how the wind was, was pulling, pulling, it, pulling it off uh, into one direction. So let's go up. This one is actually a bit more sprightly than the, than the X4 Pro. Um, there we are. And there it is leaning into the wind and then correcting itself. And actually it looks like they're modeling kind of not a steady wind, which is not how wind works. They are actually modeling a sort of slightly turbulent, gusty wind. So actually this is quite, this could be quite good. Um, of course, all hell breaks loose if you flip it into full manual mode, because you'll now have to control, and I'm rubbish manual fly. You have to control height without any height holding and correct for wind drift and correct for just generally moving around all over the place. So I'm currently working quite hard, as you can see, moving all of these sticks. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a long time since I've tried manual flying. Uh, let's go into uh, GPS. Um, 
The other things that you can do, uh, let's look down at the menu, uh, is uh, you can change the, 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 the different back scenes. That, uh, some of them are too busy, I find. Some of them are in nighttime. Uh, Japanese temple, garage, I mean, whatever. Um, one of the ones that I thought was pretty reasonable was actually, where was it? I thought the Air Ace Stadium was reasonable because it's actually relatively empty uh, and kind of a, it's a big open area. So there we go, we've got the Air Race Stadium. It actually does, I'm just gonna do some figure eights. It actually does, you know, it, it responds really, really naturally. Certainly in GPS mode. I mean, we've got some nice, look, some nice tight. Figure eights. Yeah. I, I do like the drone, the quad flight model. It's it's not bad at all. Uh, other things we can do is uh, add or take out the help screens, uh, the little overlays. So, you know, if we don't want to know what our flight mode is, uh, but I think that's fairly useful. You've got obviously zoom and monitor and you can even put like, you know, the old, the old fighter pilot HUD so you can see what's going on uh, if you want to. Um, Let's get rid of that because it's a little bit distracting. And then you've got the uh, the challenges, um, and you've got these uh, these challenges like f fly a challenge only version of the quadcopter through the course gates, do a scavenger hunt to try and take pictures of each one. So again, you can hone some of your some of your skills. They'll be more fun, I think, than necessarily practical. And in the environment, of course, you can add. How sun, where the sun is to practice flying into low sun, wind speed, direction and turbulence you can change, which is nice. And again, they've got keyboard shortcuts for all these so we can increase the turbulence and so on. Um, different aircraft to choose from, uh, uh, lots of different settings. As I say, I've got a fairly low end i3, core i3 laptop running Windows, latest version of Windows. Um, and it has automatically detected um, the right settings to give me, you know, a better physics, the best physics, and you know, we'll worry about the graphics really when we get to it. And they're okay, the graphics are fine. I'm, to be honest, I'm not looking at the scenery. Uh, for me, it's more important that you have that level of control. So all in all, it's quite an impressive job they've done. So there we go. Um, I think the overall summary is the graphics are, you know, whatever, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but they were, they were perfectly serviceable for the whole purpose of a training or skill development platform. Uh, and as I say, even on my chuggy old laptop, uh, it was very smooth, high frame rate. Yeah, it's not designed to sort of, you know, really stress. Uh, I think they've done that right. Let's put more energy into the flight model. Um, in terms of the flight model, I thought it was really interesting that you have different different varieties of UAV, including a tricopter, which is very interesting to fly. I've never flown a tri before. That's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I really like the idea that some of them, they've modeled features like return to home. I like the fact that on all of them, you can flip it into the equivalent of ATI mode, as DJI calls it, and actually experience what it's like on a windy day. You can turn up the wind with a quick couple of taps of the keyboard and just see that you're gonna drift. And I thought that was really well done. Um, <clears throat> I thought the responsiveness to the controls was accurate. Um, I thought the drone modeling was reasonable, actually. Uh, having flown real ones, uh, especially if you're gonna fly in sort of the equivalent of the full GPS mode, it's a very real um, response, I found, for the, the simulated drone to, to the control inputs. So I think if you are someone who is thinking of buying an expensive drone, uh, or you have one already, but you know you, there's a bit of confidence issues there, something like this, I think will really help you. Um, where it won't, and I think this applies to anything like this because I think the modeling is so complicated. Where it isn't particularly realistic is on the first you know, few inches of takeoff and the last few inches of landing. I think to be able to try and model the way that the prop wash affects things, particularly if you're not in a GPS mode, is really difficult. It doesn't really do that um, accurately, but to be honest, that's a big ask for software. Um, because we've all been in situations where, you know, the wind is a bit changeable. If you're landing it in ATI mode, you, you know, there's a lot of work to be done on the sticks. 
But in terms of getting used to flying nose in and effects on controls, I thought the models were very good. On the Hubsan X4 Pro, the fact that they had in a headless mode, or which is kind of like DJI's course lock, so you get used to setting the nose orientation and then however you move the right stick is in relation to that. Again, nice touch, you can use that. Um, so people who I think won't particularly benefit from this, if you've been flying a drone for ages, um, and you kind of know the score. This isn't going to bring anything new to the party. You're not going to learn anything. You can practice things, but you're not going to learn anything new. Um, I think the only difference about that might be if you've never flown in ATI mode and you're doing something like in the UK, you're going for your CA permission for aerial work, where you will be expected to fly your test as part of it, at least in ATI mode, to show that you can at least control it if the GPS fails and you've got a bit of a, some air, some wind to deal with this could be a bit of a boon because you can practice on this night and day. And that's the other thing. I did find myself last night, an hour and a half on here, playing around with the different flight models, seeing what happened if you smacked it into buildings. Funny enough, you break the thing. Um, realistically, it seems to deal realistically with, with, with breaking a prop. So if you've got a quad, it does just flip over. Uh, if you've got uh, the, one of the hexes or the octos in there, it kind of just starts to drift slightly, just as if you would if you lost a motor. So from a fun point of view, um, I really enjoyed it. From an accuracy of flight, I thought it was pretty reasonable and I really like having a proper control input. Um, uh, there are some aspects of it that aren't. It's expensive. Um, it's $150. I'm not sure what the street price UK is, but it's probably going to be around the £100 mark. Um, you have to decide whether that's right for you. I've enjoyed flying it, it's been raining, I've enjoyed getting a bit of a flight fix and some of the challenges and playing around with it. Um, you know, uh, one of the things I'm happy to do with this is, is give it to my nine-year-old son to hoon around and practice because he wants to get, get a bit more hands-on with some of my, the, the Phantoms and the bigger drones that I've got. Uh, this is an ideal way of letting him loose on, on them and sort of effectively showing me that he knows what to do. Um, you know, if you have it in the full GPS mode and you do let go, it will hold position. It's quite a realistic uh, representation. So there we are. That's the Real Flight Drone Flight Simulator. It's distributed by Hobbyco. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Many thanks for your time. And uh, I appreciate all your support. And I will see you again soon back on the kitchen table. But until then, cheers.